Hey, almost done. Semi-finals against Sorball 1. I think he's top 8 in Legacy Challenge before. He's on some kind of Leobold deck once again. Unfortunately, we are on the draw, but our hand is pretty good. Um, we've got Acceleration, we've got Insane Mana, and we've got two business spells. So all I want to draw is like a Cradle. <laughs> all I want to draw is like a Cradle here. And even if we don't draw a Cradle, like just drawing a land would already be pretty cool. Opponent probably goes for Ponder. Oh, Delva. Okay, so he's he's playing Grixis Delva, uh, I guess. <laughs> More of those. I think I might actually play Nettle Sentinel, I'm not sure. No, yeah, Death Watch Chain makes more sense. He probably dazes this. Yeah. Which I'm okay-ish with. Deva doesn't flip, which helps. So now I really want to draw land, but I think I don't. Oh, I do. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. He, he, by the way, he played a second Deva on his turn. And I just say, okay, screw this. I, I'm going on the offense. And I really, really just like want to race you, but also have insane mana on the following turn. Like if you have two Nettle Sentinels and a Heritage uh, Druid, it's it's really crazy. Like basically every one mana I have turns into a Dark Ritual at that point. And the two mana I have turned into like a crappy Rite of Flame. Or uh, uh, let's say I care about the Ritual without Threshold. Devas don't flip again, fortunately for me. And okay, so here the thing is, at this point I was like, I was so hellbent on just like going on the offense and like putting the opponent under tons of pressure, especially since he, he missed the second land drop. So I was like, oh yeah, let's just keep getting in for four. And did he did he shuffle on that ponder? Yeah, he, yeah, that's another reason. He shuffled on that ponder. So I was like, oh wow, the opponent is like under so much pressure. Let's just like just take the game that way. What I could have done here is play Heritage Druid, play Heritage Druid, play Heritage Druid, play Visionary, and then I would have exactly had nine mana to go for Behemoth. I don't want to say that loses to Forcefil or Days, but it's it's not, <laughs> I mean, it's certainly not good if that's countered. The thing is, if he has Forcefil or Days here, then I still have like two, four, six, eight points of power on the board with him at 14. And if the Delvas flip, that's somewhat unfortunate because then those guys can't attack again, but then he has to wonder, do I want to trade like those against Delva? Uh, so I think looking back, I definitely should have gone for that play, but uh, I was a bit like, oh yeah, yeah, let's just get in for this. So as you can see, as the rest of the turn plays out, I just produce tons of mana. I play Visionary. find glimpse uh, at this point that you can see i have so much mana i have glimpse i can do whatever i want i'm just gonna fast forward this turn <laughs> look at this this is what you do when you can do whatever you want in the world this is what we do with elves we just bam 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 machine gun out half our deck eventually i i decide i don't want to show him nissa even though like it's it's yeah, uh, him playing a Delver deck probably doesn't make too much of a difference, but I felt like he doesn't have mess removal in the first game, so I'd rather like establish a board like this and pass the turn. So yeah, I think that's something that has value. Opponent does flip the divers, he gets in for six, showing a spell snare. <laughs> I'm not even sure if you wanna show me spell snare there. And with us having lethal on board already, like I'm bouncing the visionaries anyway, just for good measure, I guess. Sacrifice one of my guys to natural order. Like you could argue, not even showing him that I have natural order, but it's, these days it's super likely I would have it. So yeah, <laughs> I think I really just two, four. Yeah, I already had enough anyway. So we do take the first game for the second game against what I have to assume is Grixis Derba. How did I sideboard? I did the super standard thing that I do against Grixis decks. I brought in three DK. I don't even need to look at this. I brought in three DKs. I brought in a choke and I brought in scavenging ooze. And I should have taken out three natural orders, uh, Krata of Behemoth, Reclamation Sage, and Nettle Sentinel. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. That's what I always like. These days when I play on Magic Online, 
this is the most standard sideboarding thing ever because you play against Crixus decks like all the time. You bring in those six cards and you take out these six cards. That's that's just how I roll, and <laughs> it's been working out pretty, pretty, really, pretty well. So opponent on the play, our hand. Unfortunately, we have to mulligan again. It's getting a bit too many mulligans for my taste now. This hand isn't really very good because like three of those is too many, especially if the opponent gets a turn one diver. Otherwise, it would be okay. I I actually think I might actually put that on the bottom because I need mana. Yeah, I put it on the bottom. Like you would think it goes well with these, but I. The sand actually does need mana because Deathlight Chamber is quite important, but it's not super likely to survive, at least early on. And even if it does, there's a chance that he has his own Deathlight Chamber. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna play the Vyward team bit here. Just to protect the Deathlight Chamber. Yeah. I play the Vyward team it gets dazed, which also kinda of protects the Deathlight Chamber, which would have otherwise been dazed. The downside is like, I guess I can't call it a downside because it would have happened anyway. He takes out my my Bayou uh, and we are stranded with lots of cards in our hands that we can't cast. The Delver flips off Fatal Push, which is another weird card for us because now that we actually do find the land, we once again have to lead with a Wild Symbiote because otherwise the Deathrow Chain would be taken out and the Deathrow Chain is just like too important to, to lose here. Opponent keeps crushing in. At this point, I really want to draw like a black source and a prop decay so I get some room to breathe. Wildwood symbiote, yeah, sure. <laughs> that, see, see, seeing this card, I'm like, it's kind of like a removal spell in Wildwood symbiote. Unfortunately, it's also one for this guy. And we still know that he has one of those fatal pushes. So at this point, I'm actually almost. I don't want to say guaranteed to lose because there's always like this weird chain of events where I draw like a cradle and glimpse him out. But I feel pretty far behind at this point. Playing the, the Heritage Shoot because of that Cradle turn that I was mentioning early on. He's definitely not trading here. And he makes sure that the Diver flips because he knows that like getting me in two attacks is quite important. And at this point I really need to draw Cradle. But even if I do draw Cradle, he can just like take this guy out, which he might already do right now. Oh, Thoughtsies. That's even... Like... <laughs> yeah. And at this point, it's... Oh, he doesn't take out the... I guess he can still take out the Heritage Shoot, but if I draw Cradle... Nah. Nah. Yeah, I just... I just surrendered. This, this just was too much for me. Like, the Mulligan wasn't really good, and then he had a pretty decent start, so... These are the games that you sometimes do lose if you struggle. I mean, that's what Diver is built for, punishing opponents who struggle. A lot of people do struggle. I think, I'd, yeah, I didn't need to check. Of course, I just had it the same. So, final game, fighting for the well, entrance into the finals. I opened this hand and I feel pretty good about it. Like, I really like being on the play. I really like playing hands aggressively because if I play turn one Deathrite Shaman, uh, the opponent actually has to make a choice. Oh, and he mining against the six, that's great for us. He actually has to make a choice whether he wants to kill the Deathrite Shaman or play his own pon uh, Ponder, his own Delver. And no matter what he does, I feel like we're in great shape, especially since we're guaranteed to have our second land drop with the Korean Ranger. He might even force a fill this, like it wouldn't be the. Ah, but being down on six cards. Uh, I guess you never like force filling against elves anyway. So he fork bolts the Deathwatch Shaman, and we even better than having the, the second draw, the second land drop guaranteed for Korean Ranger. We actually draw a real second land. I'm trying to bait the days, by the way, here. And since he, like it felt like a Korean Ranger that he played just so you can replay the land, so it would have made sense for him to days there. But he didn't, so I'm feeling quite confident in playing Virtual Rangers into Deathwatch Shaman. I'm really loving those one of Virtual Rangers and Elves. You, you know how like a couple of times they, they were like the actual card that we needed. In one of those previous games I was like, oh yeah, Virtual Ranger actually does more than Heritage to it here. I had some trouble tapping, tapping for black, I kept adding the wrong color. And yeah, at this point we are so far ahead if this resolves. Even if it doesn't resolve, like if it gets faster for it, we are still far, far ahead. We have great mana and we have card advantage and it's so hard for Diver to beat without pressure. Like the best way to beat elves is to play turn one death, uh, Diver of Secrets. And if you don't have that, that, that's some real problem. Yeah, opponent lets us have it. 
Thoughtseize. So at this point, I was thinking, hmm, he's probably gonna take the Visionary. But he takes the Senate. It, they are pretty much the same card, I guess, because Visionary uh, Senate would have probably just gotten Visionary anyway. Like, you could get Ooze, but I feel better about drawing a card, because, like, in these low cards in hand situations, getting to, to find Choke or Nissa is so much bigger than having the random ooze that usually just gets him for like six damage and then dies to to fatal push. He names Quirin Ranger. And that's that's surprisingly annoying. By the way, we actually draw Nissa. That's surprisingly annoying. When he named Quirin Ranger, like I expected him to name Death Rite Shaman. When he named Quirin Ranger, I was like, oh, that does that's actually not a problem. Then I was like, oh, actually, that's quite annoying. Because had he not done that, I, I could have just like gone um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I could have just, like, had he had named Death Watch Heaven, I could have cast Nissa there. But now I can't. One, two, three, four. Yeah, now I'm one mana short. So I just cast Visionary, hoping to draw Cradle. And I think I might just take. Oh, no, we draw this guy. But I, do I cast it? I guess I do cast it because. Uh, if he goes for Snapcaster, Thoughtsy, uh, Snapcaster, Fogbolt, that's okay. No, I, I, it turns out I don't cast it. I think it makes sense not to cast it here. Because once again, I actually like putting this kind of pressure on him and denying him the Fogbolt. Brainstorm, that's always great. Like, seeing them brainstorm in a situation like this, I, I, I always feel great. It's like, somebody calling my name? No. <laughs> that was really awkward. That was really weird. Anyway. <laughs> um, especially since I'm living alone. <laughs> uh, Death Watch Shaman, yeah, fine. So basically, if they play Brainstorm on a board like this, I'm like, wow, minus 50% mana for the turn. Great, great. And you're only going to draw a couple of cards that do pretty much do the same than the cards you already have. Uh, he's got uh, Death Watch Shaman, which is once again annoying because now we actually... One, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, we won't be able to cast Nissa the turn afterwards, even if we do draw land, but uh, I think it's actually okay. It's not that bad. I think I remember this game now. So, yeah. We can't attack, but we can get the scavenging goose online. He force of it pitching, I would guess, snap. Oh, he force of pitch Delva, okay. And that puts them in a really tough spot. I played Riot Arbor and really, really want to cast Nissa next turn, but once again, I'm denied. Sense a theme. Basically, so what we're doing here is we're constantly getting denied Nissa, but we also like keep grinding him out for two damage a turn, which is sometimes just enough. And he taps. That's what Shaman here, and one, two, three, four. No, once again, we don't have enough mana to cast Nissa on our turn. We need, would have needed to draw a land. Uh, let's say I get Heritage to it here. Uh -huh, one, two, three. F That's still just four mana. So Heritage to it doesn't do it. So you. Like, the instinct is to get Wildwood Symbiote, and I guess that's what we want to do, because on a board like this, you like you always have to constantly ask yourself, how do I lose? How, how can I lose? Like, winning is trivial. L winning, that's academic. You, anyone can win from a good position. But you always have to wonder, what if things go wrong? And I think the only way that things can go wrong here is if he has mess removal. And in case of mess removal, I really do want Wildwood Symbiote. So I would think <laughs> that I would get Wildwood Symbiote here. So hopefully I'm not being proven wrong now, but I think the card that makes the most sense to get here is Wildwood Symbiote. And looks like I do get Wildwood Symbiote. One, two, three. Okay. Untap this. Cast this, draw a card. Cradle. No, no cradle. Cradle would have been insane. Actually, it would have been. Yeah, <laughs> insane. <laughs> I can actually cast another Wildwood Symbiote here, which makes it even easier for me to recover if he does find some kind of mess removal. Which would be quite hard for him to cast anyway, I think, because he can't use this for mana. And he's only got about, like one black. I guess technically something like I don't know. Uh, what's the card we saw before? The, the not Parakinesis, the other thing. 
one damage to each creature your opponent controls overload anyway oh i do get death by champion okay so that makes sense because it also doesn't die to marsh casualties but she might have he goes like land marsh casualties on the other hand he hasn't played a land uh he could have he could have had it in hand but even then wouldn't matter because we have two death by champions so i like death by champion because it's like a nice balance between being able to cast Nissa next turn and also like being not being like bad against mass removal electricery is the card i was looking for at this board i think i might actually just take out the death by Gem or even the pithing needle and not cast like i think overall mm, it's hard because if he has a mass removal uh, if he has a counter spell for nissa but like the only counter spell that counters it is force of see at this point it's it's really hard to imagine like the, 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 the hard part for me to imagine right now is how do I actually lose? So I'm like, I'm actually not sure what's better, Abrupt Decay or Nissa, or maybe trying to go for both. But if you go for Nissa first, maybe you can't Abrupt Decay afterwards. So I'm like, I don't see me losing. This is this is really hard now. So, whereas if you're winning, it's often like rather easy. So I decide to take out Death Ride Shaman because if he's not doing anything with these two mana, then I feel pretty good about my situation there. Replay this guy, find Kevin of Souls, put it on Nissa, nah. <laughs> and then I just like keep getting in for damage. And at this point, at end of turn, I th I see myself bouncing the Visionary to untap the Deathrite Shaman to get him to 8. And then he's almost dead on my turn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, and then he's dead on my turn. No matter what he does. He gets another one of those which makes it harder to like this turn we can actually finally cast nissa but we don't even need to so it's been weird because it's kind it's been kind of the stance where we've been trying to resolve nissa even though as the game progressed it turns out turned out we didn't even have to and the opponent like kept denying us nissa but also like by doing so didn't really get himself ahead or on even level with us if that makes sense get him to eight and we can't cast the behemoth but we could cast the nissa i think but we don't need to really yeah at this part i'm just getting in for damage getting down to two and yeah he surrenders and wishes us good luck in the finals. So, perfect. it's been kind of a scrappy game, but like most post post-pop games with elves, it's just like the runner beats the get you. The opponent certainly did struggle, even though he's, yeah, I think he drew a lot of cards that aren't really good in the matchup, like Force, Thoughtseize. Yeah, Thoughtseize is okay. He he got a bad trade on the fog board. His de he didn't have a damage. So, so this is, I think... The crucial things about this game, certainly like being on the draw and not having anything that puts pressure on us is a big thing. But yeah, he basically had nothing that he needs against F strategy wise because you either need early pressure or you need mass removal. And this game, I think, is a great example of if you have neither of those, you are struggling really hard against Fs with like a deck like this. So yeah. See you in the finals.